So the Centennial Challenges program is really focused on trying to advance technologies not only for NASA but the nation. And the way we do that is we will put up a prize purse to uh, create, create an incentive for people to come in and solve our solutions for us. We have a competition set up, people will compete to try to win the prize money and in that competition we're advancing those technologies. As we do space exploration, we have many needs, and a lot of these are defined by NASA through what we call our technology roadmaps. It's so like, like anything when you're doing exploration, you want to know, have a general direction of where you're going and what you're going to need to get there. And so with these technology roadmaps, we have it laid out. We have a need for um, wireless power. We have a need for um, better ways to, to communicate or better ways to, to propel our spacecraft. We have uh, new challenges coming out related to CubeSats, which are very small satellites. We want to advance their technology for propulsion and for communications. We're having a challenge focused on uh, collecting samples on a planetary surface. We have the Mars Ascent Vehicle Challenge, where we're using technology to be able to pick up a sample from a planetary surface, put it in a rocket, and launch it and put it in orbit, and then we can transfer it back to Earth that way. And so that whole autonomous technology, where there's no astronauts involved to, to get that collection into a planetary orbit, um, that's a technology that we're looking at to advance. And as well, we're looking at new technologies. So up and coming things like additive manufacturing. So when you 3D print something or you additively manufacture it, uh, there's a lot of unique uh, solutions that can be done with that technology in an architectural sense. So if we're gonna try to 3D print a habitat, say for an astronaut to live in on a planetary surface, how can you best use additive manufacturing? What are some creative ways to take advantage of this new um, construction methodology? and the architectural aspects behind that, we need to explore that and use it and tap into the uh, innovation and the creativity of a lot of the people that are out there. And we wanna see what they can do to help us best use this new technology as we start doing future space exploration. So with, this, with Centennial Challenges, as we push forward in space and we try to get these new technologies that we need, we're really excited to see solutions come from unique places. And we incentivize people. We get them excited about wanting to solve these problems by holding up a prize purse and saying, hey, we need this technology in a specific area. And people come from all different sources to help solve those problems. So we get people that are makers, hackers, hobbyists, retirees, university students, high school students. We, we have a broad pool of competitors that will come to try to solve these problems for us. And we've done everything from electric airplanes, we've done vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, um, we've done a better astronaut glove, wireless transmission of power. So when we have a, a lot of competitors engaged, they all contribute because they look at the problem differently and come up with different solutions. So what's really kind of neat with prizes and competitions, there's the three G's that really motivate people. And so there's guts, glory, and gold. And it's pretty much in that order. People will compete because they, they're, it's innate in us to be a competitor, to want to wanna do the best. Um, the glory part comes from the bragging rights. You want to be able to say, I won. And then the last incentive that we see is the gold portion, so the prize purse itself. Those three together really compel people to do their best, to push the boundaries of technology, and to push the boundaries of their creativity and their, in and their innovation. And we see that over and over and over every time we run a competition. The, the, the unique solutions that we get and the way that we can infuse them in but more creatively is what these people go and do with these technologies after the competition. A few examples that we have, one of them being you know, a company that started out using lasers to zap mosquitoes. Well, they went off, went in our competition, won first place to, for uh, our power beaming, wireless transmission of power, and then now they've gone off and partnered with the uh, Department of Defense to be able to use that wireless transmission capability to power unmanned aircraft um, nonstop. We also have a competitor who is an artist there in New York City. He went off, decided he could build a better astronaut club, and sure enough, he did. So now he's gone off, taken his prize money, rolled it over, started a spacesuit company selling spacesuits. So to keep people incentivized and motivated for the competition, we generally design and formulate our competition so that they have a business back-end model. People have the, the ability to see that if they create this technology, even if they don't win the NASA prize, they can take it, roll it over, and create a company, create a business, and create an economy for themselves as well as for the nation.